Today we're talking about the game that will have you hacking, slashing, and shooting down phantoms in the Nights Within. This game is being made by a solo developer, and if you like what you see, there's a link to the game's Discord and Steam page in the description. The game is currently in early access, but it has a free playable demo. And of course, let me know your thoughts about this game in the comments. In the Nights Within, you play as a Cyber Knight, initially equipped with a sword and gun. You will begin at your keep, where you can find vendors, various NPCs, and the goodest boy. Make your way to the map room where you can choose to play solo with friends or with randoms. Technically, you could set the game up to eight players. However, there's a disclaimer that you may experience more lag and bugs over four. At the start, you only have access to one game mode called Patrol, with the other being locked behind character progression. There are currently two maps to choose from, with one location having two modifiers on it, one that is in your favor and one that works against you. Pick a difficulty and you're good to begin. While on Patrol, you'll be placed on a procedurally generated map and your mission is to complete objectives that are sprinkled across it. These objectives vary from destroying an object, collecting items, surviving enemy attacks, and so on. And I'm not kidding when I say survive. This game will throw a crazy number of phantoms at you, whether it be a heavily armored unit that does an energy slash attack, a ranged sorcerer that throws exploding skulls, or my personal nemesis, a ghost that does a slam attack that knocks you down and then just runs away. The enemy variety is impressive, and if that wasn't enough, over time they'll gain mutations that will make them even stronger. It can feel overwhelming, but you are a nice that is prepared to fight. You can shoot enemies from a distance with your gun, or you can attack, parry, and block with your sword, all the while managing your stamina as you attack, roll, and dash. You will also enhance your performance with the beacons you build your character with. But how do you get these beacons? When you complete an objective, you can spend either 20 shimmer or 6 medallions to choose a beacon. The beacons, at least from what I've seen so far, will either improve your attack ability, your survivability, or might be more utility focused like increasing run speed. Some personal favorites of mine, one that increases attack speed for a short time after each kill, and one that calls down lightning to strike enemies that are around you. After clearing 6 objectives, you will fight against a boss enemy called the Fallen. This enemy will have very powerful moves and can take a lot of damage. The fight can be visually noisy with explosion effects covering the screen and even more overwhelming if an enemy wave gets called in at the same time. Once you kill three fallen, you'll be prompted to go to an area to extract and that is when the level ends. If you manage to complete the level, then a new difficulty will unlock. But whether you complete it or die trying, you will be brought back to the keep to review your stats, check your currency gains, and see your experience progression. As you level up, you unlock items for purchase from vendors. Depending on the vendor you go to, you can improve and change how your sword and gun work. You can add new abilities to your character, change your character class, unlock things to find on the map to search for and interact with while on patrol, or for the more fashion-minded knights, you could even unlock colors for your armor pieces. I will say the pace at which you level and unlock items felt good to me and made for good incentive to keep playing. When it comes to multiplayer, your best bet is to invite friends to play with you. The game doesn't have enough players at the moment for quick play to work. Hopefully, as more become aware of the game, that changes. The main gameplay notes regarding multiplayer is that the beacons and resources are shared across the party. Communication will be key and there's also friendly fire. So for an early access game, this is very solid. The core gameplay loop is a lot of fun and I haven't seen any game breaking bugs. I mean, I have a few notes. Some enemy attacks and projectiles feel a little too sticky to my position. The distraction objective turning the ground red makes lightning and explosive arrows hard to dodge. However, these are nitpicks and possibly known issues for future patches. I would say if this game has piqued your interest at all, then definitely give the demo a try. As for myself, I'm looking forward to seeing this game get to 1.0.